<laughs> Hi, I thought I'd have a play around with this that you've uh, seen before. I'll link in the video if you haven't uh, seen it, it'll be at the end or down below. This is the Unity UT513 uh, insulation tester, and this thing actually goes up to uh, 5 kilovolts. So, uh, 5 kilovolts, 2.5. Uh, or a thousand or five hundred. So I thought, aha, uh -huh, could this be potentially useful for, uh, you know, doing some very crude um, impulse overload testing on multimeters? So I thought I'd give it a try. But to do this, you have to be able to see the waveform. Yes, it can generate 5,000 volts into a high impedance, that's its job, uh, but when you put it into a multimeter, they've got the MOVs in there with that will uh, clamp down and potentially, like, essentially go low impedance, short this thing out, and we just don't know what is going to happen. Most likely it's going to clamp to uh, the MOV voltage inside here, and this would have enough output impedance to actually continue to uh, drive that. Anyway, I thought it'd just be interesting to have a look. So I don't actually have anything that can measure five kilovolts here in the lab. Yeah, I can cobble together a do-it-yourself high-voltage probe. I'll link that in down below. And my uh, EEV blog HVP70 probe, if you haven't seen it, sexy as, um, 70 megahertz, uh, but it's only a basically a um, 700 volt probe. It's designed for mains, you know, safe mains use and stuff like that. Discount coupon code linked in down below, by the way. Anyway, so what I've got, I got this from uh, Charles at Trio Test. Thank you very much, Charles. He loaned this to me. It's the Pintech HVP15HF. Yes, it's a high voltage uh, probe. Let's have a quick squeeze at it. Curiously, on the card here, it says uh, 50 megahertz uh, 3dB band with 1,000 to 1 uh, attenuation ratio. Uh, basically, 15 kilovolts DC, 30 um, kilovolts peak, or 10 kilovolts RMS. But if you go in here to the manual, curiously, it says it's only 40 megahertz and only 10 kilovolts with a 20 kilovolt peak, so I don't know what's going on there. Anyway, a bit of a discrepancy. Anyway, it's a fairly cheap and fairly nice high voltage probe. So this will be more than good enough for measuring the five kilohertz coming from this puppy. Let's, so let's have a look and see what we get. All right, so what I've got is I've actually um, set my probe here to a thousand to one. Uh, you can set that up. This is on the Roden Shorts RTB 2004. Um, so we're one kilovolt per division now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, single shot trigger that. I've got it set to five kilovolts. Let's switch it on and see what we get. I haven't got it hooked up to the multimeter, so it's just hooked up directly to the uh, probe. So there's basically no load on there except the 100 meg. Oh, let's try that again. All right, one more time for the dummies. Here we go. Bingo, there it is. And our meter down here, I'll turn that off and <laughs> be careful, is showing uh, 100 meg. So that's it's nominating, that's nominal input impedance. So it's bang on. And you can see that we've got a fairly, what are we at? Uh, 20 milliseconds per division. So it takes, you know, 60, 70 milliseconds to uh, ramp up and switch on here. So obviously it's doing, it's not, I mean, I can't remember the teardown, which I'll link in down below. Um, it's obviously not like ramping up and then like using a relay to let's switch it on. It's actually ramping up the output. It would have been, that's not really what I wanted, unfortunately. I wanted it to build up the, the high voltage to the capacitor bank and then when you press the test button to boom, discharge. And that's not the uh, input capacitance of the uh, probe either, because the input capacitance is only one picofarad. So, you know, it's, it's bugger all. So that's going to have bugger all effect on the uh, ramping up there. So if we just uh, go in here, let's go in and have a, have a squeeze. You can actually see all the switching noise on there, which you expect, you know, which is fine for an IR meter, you know, that, you know, it, it, it is what it is, uh, basically. But, yeah, there you go. It is actually significantly above... The uh, five kilovolts, though, according to this, I mean, one, two, three, four, five, it's like, geez, you know, it's like at least five and a half, 5.7 kilovolts, something like that. All right, so let's try that again, uh, but let's hook up the meter this time. So I've got the probes uh, hooked up to there, and then the, uh, well, the output of the IR tester hooked up to there, and then the 
uh, high voltage probe in parallel with that. So let's give that a burl. And I have actually tested this before. I know that the BM235 does actually uh, survive this, but I didn't have a scope probe to actually uh, do it. So here we go. Let's single shot capture and test five kilovolts. Boom, there we go. Aha, we got some clamping. Look at that, no overshoot whatsoever. Bummer, because that's really what I wanted. Um, oh. So if we actually have a look at that, you can see it uh, ramp up and then do some funny business. Anyway, you can see the uh, internal uh, oscillation in there for the switching converter, but there is no, there is no overshoot there whatsoever. And we're on 500 volts per division. So 500, 1000, 1500, about 1800 volts. It's obviously being clamped by the meter there because the output of the uh, insulation resistance tester should be capable of more than that. But yeah, I was hoping to get like the five kilovolts and then boom, you know, it. but these things clamp ridiculously quickly. But the whole idea, the MOVs inside the meter do, but the whole idea was that uh, I was hoping that it would charge up the capacitor bank inside and then boom, dump the energy. So I can't remember what the uh, deal is there, but yeah, it's we've just got this slow ramp up, so that's eh, it's no good anyway. Um, the fact is, the meter does survive, so it's still okay, but yeah, it's not the it's not the big surge overload thing that I wanted because if you look at the uh proper uh test waveforms, the impulse waveforms for the uh for the cat testing on a meter, then they actually have a specific. Uh, response over X number of microseconds and stuff. This is nothing like that. I just, you know, it's just very crude attempt at, uh, you know, potentially doing it as a like a go no to go go no go test um, for you know meters to see if they survive. And in case you're wondering, yes, a new uh, 121 GW EV blog meter coming out reasonably soonish. Um, anyway, uh, it also uh, has survived, but I haven't captured the waveform yet. So let's uh, do exactly the same again. So this was the B existing waveform for the BM235. So I expect a similar sort of clamping the, uh, inside the 121 GW or any multimeter with uh, MOVs for that matter that will uh, clamp it down. So let's have a look and test. Boom. Oh, look at that. That's interesting. Wow. Look. Uh, that's the um, 121 GW just beeping due to overload condition. You can see the little uh, display there. So I'll turn that off and wow, look at that. It's jumped back down and it's jumped up again. So that's kind of like a more severe test, I guess. Let me, let me take that out. Let me take the scale out. A bit and we'll uh, we'll redo that shall we let's give that a squiz no okay it's fine so what's going on there have we got some sort of intermittent thing anyway it is clamping a very similar voltage and a very similar way to the BM 235 which is exactly what you'd expect um, and the meter survives uh, just fine but that's really yeah why did we get that Weird waveform. Did we have some? Oh, I remember there's a big high voltage relay in the output of uh, this thing. If you look at the uh, teardown, and maybe that's uh, maybe that had some contact bounce or something. But anyway, that's really quite strange. Huh, we didn't see that again. Weird. Anyway, what we've got now is the poster child for uh, cheap meters these days, the um, Aning AN8008. And I have tested this and it did actually survive, but there's something, uh, before I got the probe, but there is something interesting that happens to it. So let's actually do this. Okay, so five kilovolts, exactly the same. Let's go and let's test it. Whoa! Look at that. And I'm not sure if you can hear that, but that is arcing over inside. It is hideous. It is absolutely hideous. But look at what we've jumped up to. Unbelievable. I better turn that off before it <laughs> dies in the ass. I, it is obviously continuing to arc over there. Just arc over. And you actually, that manifests itself as a uh, high frequency noise inside that thing. I'll see if I can capture the noise. All right, let's try it again. 5,000 volts. Got the external mic. Oh, meter just turned off and died. 
this is not good. We've got some segments frozen on here, and it doesn't seem to do anything. Have we killed it? Has some, like, back EMF into this thing killed it or something? I don't know. I've done this several times, and it wasn't a problem. Damn. We might have killed it. No, we're actually good to go. We're back in action, so let's try that again. Just took the batteries out. It's a bloody soft button crap. Anyway, try it again. Whoa, uh. Whoa, yeah, we killed. Have we killed it? Stop, E stop. Whoa. No, it seems to be uh, still working. I've got to check the uh, cow, but it seems to be doing the business. Let's open it up and have a look. Anyway, on the Aning, we are actually getting up to like 3,000 volts, so 1,000, 2,000, actually 3,500 volts in that initial climb, and then about, you know, th one, two, almost, you know, 3,000 volt peaks on there. So, yeah, if we could survive that, that's not bad. So I don't actually expect to see anything on the top side here. I think it's arcing over in the range contact switches and I've done a video on this demonstrating this beautifully and I'll link it in at the end. Um, check it out because it's absolutely brilliant. All right, so let's try that again. Five kilovolts, here we go. <laughs> that sounds horrible. Now, unfortunately, we can't power this up with the uh, cover on because then the rain switch and it has the contacts and it'll cover up everything else. So we're going to have to run it with it off. And remember, this meter does not have any MOV protection. So it's not doing any clamping. So the clamping is somewhere else in diodes or whatever. It does have one PTC in there, which can limit the uh, inrush current, but it's not doing any voltage clamping. Anyway, let's do the five kilovolts again and see if we can get some arcing across those switches. Woohoo! There it is. There's the failure point. Oh, you can actually see some of the burn pit marks in there um, from where it's arced over. Anyway, let's try it again. <laughs> this is going to be great. Watch. <laughs> so as you can see, the little uh, Aning 8008 actually uh, survived that just fine in quote marks um but don't go saying oh look this is fantastic this 25 dollar meter you know like survives you know these three and a half kilovolt pulses these you know horrible pulses up here um no it is yeah it does but it's that's not the point of the cat ratings and everything else. Uh, the meter that we've got here, I, what I thought this might be able to do is to charge up its capacitor bank inside and then dump the energy, um, impulse it into the meter. I was hoping it would do that, but um, basically all we've got is just a, basically just a high voltage uh, uh, power supply generator, which then just um, clamps internally in meters, like in good meters, like the BM235 and the 121GW that actually have the MOVs in inside the metal oxide ver varistas that do the clamping or gas discharge tubes in other meters like uh, Gossen that use GDTs, similar sort of thing. So in these meters, you saw that it actually safely clamped the voltage. So then the PTCs and other input protection resistors and other diode clamping can do their job. The Aning actually doesn't have that, doesn't have any MOVs in it. It's just got the PTC. So it's it's not surviving through good engineering, whereas something like the this is surviving through proper engineering, proper independent UL certification testing and everything else, right? It's designed, those MOVs are doing their job, clamping it down so that then the PTCs that come up afterwards can protect the device and the input divider resistors. Yeah, this thing did survive this, but it's, no, it doesn't make it a good meter. It's got no MOV protection. So we were just, you know, it, it, it's actually not that hard to protect against just a simple high voltage uh, with input protection resistors and stuff like that. You don't necessarily need clamping MOVs just to do that, but the whole point is to dissipate energy. This has no ability to dissipate dissipate um, high voltage overload impulse energy, whereas something with MOVs that's safe and designed to do it does. So this is not a good test for that. But anyway, I just wanted to have a play around and see the Unity um, meter. It didn't quite do what I want, but that was fascinating. We found a fascinating result with an un-MOV protected 
meter. And you saw that the other ones, you know, were clamping nicely at the 1800 volt level because these normally have like, you know, they might have like two 900 volt MOVs in series or whatever, and then they clamp at the, uh, at the 1800 volts or whatever particular rated um, MOVs that you have inside these things, but that's typical, under two kilovolts. And then the rest of the input protection can do its job easily and safely. The MOVs are designed to dissipate the energy. So there you go, I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up for engagement. And as always, comment down below. And I'll link in those videos at the end here. Check it out. The teardown of this was uh, pretty interesting. It's not a bad, it's got quirky software-y you know, lock up issues, which we've seen here and in other videos. But you know, for a five kilovolt insulation uh, uh, tester, it's it's not too shabby. And thanks for uh, Charles at Trio uh, Test for loaning me this uh, high voltage probe. I'll link it in down below. It's a couple of hundred bucks. Um, and I'll also link in my, which I haven't done a teardown of yet, my HVP70 probe, and there'll be a discount code down below for that one. But I've got to do a video on that. So if you're looking for a, um, a professional UL listed uh, probe, I didn't do this video just to plug this, but it's here, so why not? Um, yeah, I haven't really advertised this yet, but quite a lot of people have uh, bought it already. In fact, my sh first shipment is almost uh, sold out. So there you go, I'll link it in down below. That's for safe high voltage uh, differential uh, probe measurement on uh, mains type stuff. So different to what we are doing here, really. Anyway, catch you next time.